Hey everyone, Eric here. In this video, I'm going to turn you into an expert in understanding free cash flow for startups through a finance case study. The reason I created this video is because net income is often very misleading when it comes to understanding the health of a startup and free cash flow almost always clarifies what's really going on. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so in today's lesson, we're going to analyze a three statement financial model about an e commerce business to understand what free cash flow is and why it's so essential to monitor it. So, the concepts that I'm going to explain to you apply equally to all business models, not just e commerce. So, if you're a software business, a marketplace, a brick and mortar business, you can apply these exact same concepts directly to the way that you're running your business. I just chose an e commerce startup because it is a, specifically a type of business that shows nearly every dimension of why free cash flow is so important because it has uh, assets on the balance sheet and it has a lot of sort of interesting things that that help you to understand it. So the basic definition of free cash flow is just operating cash flow minus investing cash flow. But I understand that's not a super helpful definition. The deeper meaning is that once the business has funded 100% of its internal operations, is there any cash left over? So let's dive into our finance case study right here. So it's an e-commerce business needs to understand its profitability. So the setup is this startup is having difficulty managing its burn rate and balance sheet. In months where it makes a profit on the P&L, which is the income statement, it's running out of money. In months where it loses money, it seems to increase the amount of cash it has on the balance sheet. So the business is also purchasing and selling through inventory, paying off a loan, capitalizing software development, and, and other things that most businesses are often doing. So the case study today is that we want to analyze the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow to really understand the profitability and the health of this company. So we're going to look at the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. And before we dive in, I just want to look at some very high-level metrics to get oriented before we really go in here. So First off, our revenue is about $415,000 a month, and you can see that it's going up in certain months, it goes down in this month, In this month uh, we do a sale, so there's a spike in revenue, and then it goes back down to kind of a baseline. Net income in every month is positive, so we have $17,000, $77,141, so obviously bouncing around a little bit, but here's our free cash flow, negative $22,000, now you can see it's much higher than net income in this month, and then much lower, and then much higher. So in almost every month that the net income is positive, um, or in uh, two, uh, only two of the six months where net income is positive, free cash flow is also positive. And so you can see our total cash balance is actually going down when we would expect it to go up. It's going up dramatically in certain months, then it's going down again in, in another month when we're net income positive. So we need to figure out what's going on and, and so we can understand how do we actually run our business. So here we, here we go. We have month one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to just start walking through the income statement. So here we have orders and net revenue. So orders, we have them scaling from 3,000 to about 5,000. And you see our cost of goods sold. You have a breakdown of a typical e-commerce business, product cost, import duty and freight, pick and pack, shipping, merchant fees. So you have your total COGS and you have your gross margin. And of course, a gross margin has a percentage of revenue, which is really important to monitor for all types of businesses. You can see it's relatively stable, but in this one month where we almost more than double the orders, the gross margin goes down. And the reason is because we ran a discount. And so um, you know, it you sell more product, but you, you do it at a lower margin. And then you can see here that our gross margin is, is recovering. So here in the operating expenses, you can see we have basically a 96,000 a month of personnel costs. We have some ad spend that's bouncing around, other miscellaneous marketing, consultants, depreciation. This is one thing I want to highlight. This is a very important subject, which we need to dive into insurance, office rent, software, miscellaneous. So everything here, the cash outlay of all of these items is the same as it's reported on the P&L. So you have 96,000 and you pay 96,000. Depreciation, on the other hand, you are purchasing assets and then depreciating them, which means spreading the cost out, usually over three 
or sometimes five years, depending on what exactly you're purchasing. So you can't actually see how much cash is going out. The other thing is product costs on the income statement. You're not buying product as you sell them. You're manufacturing products, you're putting them on your balance sheet, you're warehousing them. So you're buying products in these big chunks and then you're selling through the products. So this is another thing that the true cost of this does not look like this. It's you know big lumpy costs and then months where there's no cost. And so that's what the cash flow statement is gonna really tell us about. Now if we go down here, we have operating income. You can see interest. Interest means we have debt. So it means we're paying interest on a loan. Debt repayments themselves do not show up on the income statement. You can only see that on the balance sheet. That being said, the interest payments on debt are reported in the interest and taxes section of the P&L. So this means there's also something happening with our loan. We might be taking out bigger loans, we might be paying them off, but we can't see it on the income statement. So you can see that there's potentially large investments and assets being made, or maybe they're not, um, but it looks like the depreciation is increase, increasing, so probably we're buying assets, probably we're doing something with debt, and we don't know what's happening with our inventory. So, and here we have taxes, and we have, we're reporting taxes each month, we're saying 25%, but the reality as well is that um, we don't pay taxes monthly. Most businesses have to do quarterly, um, like a tax estimated tax payment. So companies would say, you know, once a quarter, they save up and they say, okay, we're going to prepay our taxes rather than pay it all at the end of the year. So we're probably saving up uh, an amount of money every three months and then prepaying payments to the government. So again, this also does not, the net income captures none of these things. So our net income here tells us, roughly speaking, based on our unit economics, like if our business should be making money. But now let's dive into the balance sheet to really figure out what is going on. Okay, balance sheet, we have the assets. So in the balance sheet, you have your assets, your liabilities, and your equity. Um, so your assets should always equal your liabilities plus your equity. So that's just a mathematical rule. Um, if you don't know how to build a three statement financial model, I will put a link, uh, include a link right here in the video to my three statement financial model. If you work in finance or you're running a company, it's really essential that, that you understand uh, how these things work. Okay, so here you have your cash and here you have your inventory. So your inventory you can see is 335 and this is the cost of basically manufacturing and shipping all the products to your warehouse. So 335,000 of inventory. So when that number goes up, that basically means you increased your inventory. So you can see that you increased your inventory by 113,000. So that's cash that actually had to go out of the business. And now in a month like this, this means that you're reducing the value of your inventory. That means you're selling through your inventory and you're actually making uh, money because you're converting that inventory in straight into sales. And so, now you can kind of see what, what the issue is here, and you, you can see that we are increasing our inventory up to a certain point, and then we let it go down, and then we increase it a little bit more. So each month that's going to be hitting our cash flow differently. We have accounts receivable, which are relatively steady, other current assets steady. Software platform. So it sounds like we are capitalizing our software development. So capitalizing capitalizing software development means um, cap means taking your payroll and putting payroll on balance sheet and removing from the PL. So if you are building some kind of asset with engineers, you say, well, they're building this thing that I'm going to use for a long period of time. So rather than reporting, we hired an engineering team and we paid them $100,000 in month one, you would say, we paid them $100,000, but now we're going to spread the cost of that over three years. So you would say $100,000 divided by three years, 36 months. And from an accounting standpoint, this is supposed to be a way where you're able to match the investment 
with the usefulness, with the useful life of, of the investment you made. And so this is called capitalizing assets. And so here you can see that we spent $100,000 because we increased it from 100 to 200. Then we spent 10,000, then we spent 50,000. And so we're actually spending a lot of money, but that's not hitting the P&L in any way. The only thing that's hitting the P&L is our investments divided by the useful life of each investment. So that's in this case, most software is depreciated over 36 months. So we have spent in these six months, $240,000 on our software platform, but the depreciation only shows $40,000. So those costs will get reported over the next three years as we depreciate those assets, but that, that it's a huge amount of cash flowing out of the company because we are capitalizing the software development costs. Next, we have liabilities, accounts payable, um, tax liability. So here you can see for each quarter, we're taking those sort of estimates from the P&L on taxes and we're building them up to the end of the quarter. And then we're basically paying that 80,000 to the government, resetting it, building it back up, and then paying that 100,000 to the government. So the cash isn't flowing out in this way. It's actually flowing out in these lumps, which you can see on the balance sheet. And then finally, you see that we have actually a line of credit that it looks like we're paying off by about $25,000 a month. So that's a loan. Now, the cash flow is where you will see all of this stuff going on. So the cash flow statement here, we have three main sections of the cash flow statement. You have operating cash flow, um, and this is also called cash flow from operations. So the ca we call it the cash flow statement, or sometimes they call it the statement of cash flows. It's the exact same thing. Operating cash flow, cash flow from operations. Investing cash flow, cash flows from investing. Uh, and the same with financing. So this is basically um, the three sections of the cash flow statement are operating, investing, and financing. So in operating cash flow, you see everything related to paying the expenses of the business operations. In the investing section, this is related to investments that the business makes in long-term assets. So paying an employee their salary one month is not an investment, that's an expense. So you'll see that here in the operating cash flow. But buying assets, investing in a software platform, it could also be buying shares in another company. When you buy assets, long-term assets, you put it in the investing section of the cash flow statement. And financing is anything related to money either coming, coming in or being paid out of the business for non-operational purposes. So the owners of a business, like let's say I own this business 100% and I wanted to pay myself a distribution, well then that would flow out through the financing section. Or let's say I wanted to lend the company money or somebody else wanted to lend the company money, that would flow in through the financing. But that's not related to the day-to-day -day operations of the business. This is just the capital structure and how the business is capitalized or what it's doing with its excess cash. So free cash flow is the amount of money left over after a business has paid all of its expenses and made all of its necessary investments and assets. So this is just leftover money. So with this money, you can pay off debt, you can pay yourself distributions, you can do whatever you want, but this is ultimately the cash that the business is kicking out. After the free cash flow, the business has no other obligations unless it's related to uh, financing. So that's, that's why free cash flow is so important. So let's walk through the operating cash flow section. You always start with your net income. So your net income, you just link it in straight from the income statement here, and then make all of these adjustments. So the accounts receivable, the balance went up. And so that basically means that people owe you money. So that's actually negative to your cash. And then if the balance goes down, it means that you got paid. Accounts payable, that's basically what you need to pay to other people. If that number goes higher, that's more cash for you. If that number goes lower, it means you had to pay them. Depreciation, we're just basically stripping this straight out of the income statement. Inventory. Here's what you can really see. So what we're doing is we're just looking at changes in the amount of our inventory. So when you see we go from 335 to 448, you can see that our that's a negative to our cash. And so you can see inventory bouncing all around. 
Some months we generate a lot of cash by selling through our inventory. Some months we lose a lot of cash because we have to buy so much inventory. Then we have our taxes being paid. And so you can see that when we make the payments, cash goes out, but when we don't make them, we're actually saving cash. And then here, you can see on the software platform that in month one, we must have not made any investments, but in month two, we paid out $100,000, month three, 10,000, 50,000, 75,000, 5,000. And this gets us to our free cash flow. And so here you can see again, why was our in net income $77,000 and our free cash flow negative 95,000? Here, because we purchased uh, such a huge amount of inventory in this month. That was the main driver. And then we paid a bunch of um, software engineers to work on this platform. Okay, but what about in this month, why was our net income only 140 and our cash flow is 272? Well, in this case, we had the kind of opposite dynamic at play. We sold through a lot of inventory without buying additional inventory. And we did not pay um, very much money to this engineering team that's building the software platform for us. And we also didn't make the tax payment, and so that's more cash just that came and sat on our balance sheet. Finally, you can see our net cash flow, which is after financing. But again, net cash flow is important, but it gives you less of an operational view and more of a holistic view because this business doesn't necessarily need to have a loan. It could have a loan, it could not have a loan. That's really unrelated to the operations of the business itself. So the net cash flow tells you, can this business pay for pay its debts and run itself at the same time? And the net cash flow is obviously going to be slightly lower than the free cash flow because this business has uh, some amount of leverage. Okay, so I hope this finance case study gave you a great understanding of free cash flow and how to read the three financial statements. Also, I have two additional ways that I want to help you build your company or your career. So first off, if you want me to teach you everything I know about finance for startups in a small group with personalized support from me, join the waitlist in the description below or here in the Excel file for a chance to join the next cohort of my training program, Finance for Startups. Second, I just launched a startup finance job board for our community. If you want to hire a fractional or full-time finance candidate or you want to be hired by a startup, check out startupfinancejobs.com and I have a link to it as well in the description below and here in the Excel file. And always, in the description below, you can download this Excel template completely for free. And if you want to support my channel, please like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.